All right, folks. Hey, everybody. Dave Neal here, a.k.a. DJ Davey Bijou, your boy, the little gem himself from Rhode Island. Good to see you. We're back at it. Uh, today's video, we're talking about Matt James catching up on a story from a day and a half ago. Bachelor Matt, I'm really on top of it today. Bachelor Matt James um, was on People to discuss sending Victoria Larson home. So I'll play that interview for you guys and then share a few funny memes about it. And then I think we can finally seal the casket of the storyline of Victoria on The Bachelor, unless they bring her back for Bachelor in Paradise. And let's be honest, I guess at this point, if you're a Bachelor producer, how can you not bring her back? Um, I'm going to share uh, what uh, Victoria has been posting on her Instagram. Spoiler alert, she deleted her account or made it private. Anyhow, let's get right into it. Um, here we go. Bachelor Matt James on the easy decision to send Victoria Larson home. He said, I had no words for her. Victoria Larson went home during Monday's episode of The Bachelor following toxic drama in the house. Toxic drama she um, wholeheartedly created. So let's check this interview out and then uh, talk about it. If you're having to belittle someone else for you to shine, then those aren't the qualities I'm looking for in my life. Bachelor Matt James has a zero tolerance policy when it comes to mean girls. After five new women were added to the group last week, there was a clear divide that quickly turned nasty. It still is like OGs versus newbies. Like we want more newbies to go home so that we get more time with Matt. Because of their toxicity in the house, Matt sent home Anna and Victoria. And I love how they say uh, Matt's got zero tolerance. Yeah, week five. It took five weeks. Now it makes you wonder what did he know about them other than, you know, obviously when the bachelor shows up, this must be every bachelor's greatest fear, right? They show up to the uh, cocktail party, rose ceremony, whatever it's called. Everyone just puts on their happy behavior. What they need to do, I've been saying this for a while, they need a security camera so Matt James can see what people are like when he's not around. I want them to, I want Matt to see their cattiness. I also think Matt James should just like let Tyler Cameron go out there and flirt with them and see which girls are flirting back. That might not be fair because I'd flirt with Tyler Cameron at this point. I mean, who wouldn't flirt with Tyler Cameron if he's out there? That might not be fair. And he told me all about the dramatic episode. How quickly did you make the decision to send home both Anna and Victoria? It was an easy one. You know, when, when that uh, information was made available to me about what was going on in the house, that type of name calling and just blatant lies and rumors is unacceptable. When Victoria walked up to you, gave you her two cents, and you just looked back and didn't say a word, it was maybe one of the most epic, perfect moments in Bachelor of all franchise history. Sometimes the best things in an interview are the ones that go unsaid. So uh, Matt James laughing silently to himself for having not said anything to Victoria. You know, he's a nice guy. He could have easily said, hey, I'm sorry, or this or that. He just stared her down <laughs> like she was in a different class than him. And look, maybe she is. You know what I mean? He's like, I finally am allowed to send you home. Because we know the Bachelor producers are like, look, you know, you like these five girls, but we're going to keep Victoria around. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's got to play by the rules. Finally, they're like, all right, okay, you can send her home. She called another girl a hoe and a slore or whatever. And uh, he's like, fine, I will. And I will keep, you know, because they say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And that's exactly what he did. I just loved it. I honestly feel so sorry for you that you would listen to hearsay and not all of the facts behind the situation. I had no words. What do you say to He looks like a bouncer at a club. You know, when you're trying to get in and they're like, look, no more dudes. Only chicks get in. He's just like, all right. Yeah. I know you jump into it. You have expectations. But has there been any one thing that you really struggled with during the show? Maybe you didn't I match. Yeah, I would have never imagined I was going to be dealing with things like I did last night with grown women. But I mean, grown women. You got Kit. She's barely a day over 21. You know, some of these girls are 23. I mean, I understand, legally speaking, these are grown women, but also the brain doesn't stop developing until your mid-20s on a healthy body. God knows what kind of Adderall and, you know, uh, bottomless mimosas these girls are chugging. Who knows where they're at? Whatever you have to do to make sure that these women are comfortable and you can get the best out of them and they can get the best out of me. You've talked a lot about your mom. What has your mother said so far about Cute. your journey as she's watched? My mom's hilarious. She's like <laughs> clowning me just like everybody else. You know, I, I, I kind of tune my mom out just like everybody else when ah. I'm watching it. <laughs> you got, again, someone's going to leave a comment saying, let the interview play. 
Go to people.com if you want to watch the interview. This is me, baby. But um, I love it. that he's, The mom's clowning him. He's got a great sense of humor. And I say this as a comic. I get dull very easily from certain people. You know, like Peter Weber. There ain't nothing funny about Peter Weber. He's never, I mean, there's a pilot. He flies over the clouds. No jokes in sight. Matt James has humor. This guy's funny. And that comes right down from your mom. He was raised single mom. I don't know what it is, folks. It, I, you know, raised by a single mom. There's something funny that happens. God says, you know what? You don't have a dad to teach you how to catch. We'll give you a sense of humor. <laughs> You're getting some heat on social media for kissing with the eyes open. What do you think of people obsessing over this? I didn't really know that that was something. That, I didn't even know it was a thing until I started watching these episodes back. But what I did see last night is Jessica Biel put up a picture with her and Justin Timberlake, and, and he had his eyes open when he was kissing her. So I'm just like, you know, me and JT are on the same page. Ah. People got to be more open to, to to that that type of relationship. Yeah, I mean, serial killers also kiss with their eyes open, but you're not sharing any of that. So that's yeah, okay. I mean, look, my fiance, I, 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 when I was watching this before it became a meme, I go, oh, geez, he's kissing with his eyes open. She goes, so what? That's not a big deal. I was like, okay. Then later on, I went and I gave her a kiss with my eyes open and she opened her eyes and she was like, what are you doing? I was like, exactly. It's weird. That's it. All right, there you go. Well, that's your exclusive people interview. This is it. Slow news day, folks. Figured you guys might want to hear me talk about something. Yeah, you know, look, he's a funny guy. So he's looking at back. I mean, it makes you wonder, though, what he thought of Victoria aside from her name calling. Was there an attraction there? I mean, he was on the date where they all dressed up for the wedding with that fake photographer guy. You know, that Zohan looking dude. Who's that guy? Just that spray tan, you know, with the hair that looks like he was out of like an experimental barbershop catalog. You know, the hair just, okay, I digress. But uh, what, you know, like, so he, he saw that she was a, you know what, a, uh, a pill, if you will, uh, from their group dates. I guess, uh, I guess it crossed the line. You know, if you're The Bachelor, you almost want to hear these things because you got to feel a little bit bad sending people home. So you, f- you, you find out that she called another girl a, uh, a hoe for being a dancer, you got to go. I mean, he did her the good service of waiting till the rose ceremony, which I'm sure was producer driven. I'm sure the producers wanted to see what she would do in front of people because she's the type of person who she kind of like makes bigger moves when it's in front of others. That's an ego thing. That's kind of an insecurity thing. You know, like I have to, you know, stamp my, like my, you know, like what, like my ground around you. You know, they always say like, oh, you're different when you turn the cameras on. Well, that's probably because she's just like trying to stack up in this hierarchy of hoes. Her words, not mine. Her words. Don't go leaving comments about me. There it is, folks. Victoria, and by the way, hierarchy of hoes is funny. That's funny because it's, you know, you know, uh, alliterative. Someone had commented that they said I was making fun of Victoria Larson, and that's just the same as bullying. And I was like, not true. They're like, well, you said she was the Michelin man. And I was like, well, she was wearing a puffy white jacket. You know, let the comics worry about comedy. We know what we're doing. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't criticize some doctor for how he's doing his surgery. The guy went to school for that. I didn't go to comedy school. Life is comedy school. So anyway, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue whether or not I'm bullying Victoria for saying she looked like the Michelin man. And then also and then the second thing is people go, Well, you're bullying her because, you know, I, I made that video about her with the um the uh what you call it, the uh, photo, the prison photo. What's that called? What's it called when you take the prison? Jesus Christ, I can't remember he didn't go to prison. Mugshot. Wow. When she got her mug shot, I said it was ironic because she did not. She didn't have makeup on, and she was, um, you know, in jail for stealing makeup. That's irony, which you know is on my side. But anyway, I digress. I don't need to defend my sense of humor, um, but uh, but I will anyway because uh, you know I, what I was doing is not repetitively bullying someone in a household. Becca, Becca with a K, uh, from Chatty Broads. Ch- uh, Becca was asked if um, the cattiness is toxic this season. Did you feel this way when you were on The Bachelor? And she said, to be honest, I think I don't, by the way, when you, these kids these days with their, you know, acronyms, it's so hard to follow. In real life, to be honest, it's one after another. TBH, I think I don't think, let me read that again. TBH, I think I don't think. 
the girls are any significantly worse than past seasons. I think it's the environment that's been being created. The girls are going stir crazy being in one place for so long and bringing in all the new girls. Seriously, F's things up. Take my word for it. We would have all lost our damn minds if they brought in a group of new women on like week four of the season I was on. Okay, maybe that explains like the, the top 10% of cattiness, but there was a lot lurking around before the new girls showed up. There was a lot lurking around with Victoria. Um, I don't know about MJ. I don't know about Anna. They seem to be fine beforehand, but um, it's so funny. They've been at the, you know, they've been at the castle in Pennsylvania for nine days, and they're consider- calling themselves the OGs. It's like, all right, chill out. You barely broke your sheets in before the new chick showed up. All right, this one's funny. I'm sorry, but Matt looked at Victoria the way I look at a customer yelling at me when I know they are in the wrong. <laughs> look at that. I mean, just a solid zero expressions. It looks like they just woke him up. He's not throwing her shade. He's giving her nothing. And someone like Victoria, this is the this is how you defend yourself against someone like Victoria. She needs your energy to further her point. She needs you for her to be catty against. He's giving her nothing. So she walks away going, he didn't sign anything back to me. Yeah, because you are on a different level of um, weather than he is. He's in the stratosphere. You're one of these low-lying cumulus clouds that might look like a Michelin man. It's a callback. Not that funny, but it was a call. Callbacks when someone has um, you know, a connection they make and your brain literally connects it with the neurological pass- pathway and then you go, aha, and then you clap. So I'm assuming in the audience you guys go, haha, and you're clapping, right? All right, maybe not. Slow news day, Thursday. All right, um, Petty Betty, great name, said, Bachelor Nation, we did it. Victoria's going home. And, of course, this is um, Vice President Kamala Harris receiving the phone call that Victoria's going home. Uh, I believe she's also the president of the Senate. Is that how it works, folks? She's the um, deciding vote in an otherwise split Senate, which is 50-50. So shout out to Georgia. All right. I digress. This isn't a political channel. You guys don't care. Let's move along. That was it. Uh, we squeezed some life out of that story. I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be uh, interviewing on another Bachelor recap channel later on today, so I'll give you the info about that, and you guys can go check that out and uh, leave a comment. And uh, I mean, how would you deal with it? How would you deal with Victoria? Because it's easy to say, well, I get rid of so so so, you know, all these people up front. But you have to remember, the Bachelor, while they want to find love, they also don't want their season to suck. So you go into the season going, all right, I want a good season. If that means there's going to be drama, sure, that's all going to exist. But also you you don't want it to cross the line. And clearly it crossed the line. Anyway, I've been DJ Davey Bijou. That's my new name. You guys have a good one. I'll see you all later. Bye, everyone.